everyone. Um, this is another topic that I have been getting slammed with video requests for, and it is the EKG interpretation. Um, you guys are wanting to know if I get an EKG question on NCLEX, how do I answer it? And I said, usually anybody that emails me that, I refer them, I just say, get a book. Go get a book because this is not a topic that you should be learning on YouTube. Really, if you don't know anything about EKG rhythms and strips, don't try to just think you're going to watch short video clips and understand it. That is not how it should be at all. I don't care who the lecturer is, me or anybody else. This is something that um, you really need to learn in school, but I know that's not always happening. But you really need to um, spend a lot of time on this topic, especially uh, registered nurses who plan to go into uh, cardiology like me or if you want to do ICU or um, really, really any kind of med surgical route because um, this is life or death stuff right here. Being able to identify what rhythm your patient is in, the assessment and the treatment, um, all are very serious, um, very serious considerations. Okay, so that's why NCLEX is putting them on the exam now and we as new nurses have to be able to answer appropriately, okay, for safety. So, even though I said I wasn't going to do this, I am going to attempt to talk about some EKG interpretations for you guys. Okay, so this will be on tachycardia, all right? Um, this will be on sinus tachycardia. I'm going to try to start with a very simple topic um, to kind of set a foundation. Now, this is just a review, so I'm not going into P waves. QRS complexes, y'all already need to know the normals of that, okay? I'm not talking about that here, all right? I'm going to talk about sinus tachycardia. That's it. So, the heart. Let's start with the heart. It is very simple in terms of the functions, all right? Um, and the heart does four things, all right? It's either going to be too fast or too slow, or it's going to be regular or irregular. That's it, okay? That's the span of what you need to know, okay, those things. Now, when we talk about tachycardia, what does tachycardia mean that the heart is doing? The heart is beating too fast, right? Yes, so we're, we're still together. Tachycardia, the heart's beating too fast. Now, if we look at um, tachycardia, there's three main types of tachycardia you want to know for NCLEX, all right? What are they? I didn't hear you guys. What are the three types of tachycardia that you need to know for NCLEX? Mm, mm, mm. Okay, if you didn't know them, they are sinus tachycardia, atrial tachycardia, and ventricular tachycardia. Those are the three. I'm only talking about sinus tachycardia here, okay? So if you look at the word sinus tachycardia, what can we know just from the name? What is the heart doing? Well, sinus means what? That the rhythm is going to be regular, okay? Tachycardia means it's going to be too fast. So you have a regular rhythm that's too fast. I'm going to show you um, an EKG strip of sinus tachycardia. Now what I want you to look at is that the pattern is going to be very regular. There's going to be a, Q, um, a QRS complex after every P wave, but it's just going to be a little fast. All right, so um, I'm going to show you that now. Okay, now, when we talk about assessing, assessing is huge, huge for NCLEX, all right, when it comes to these rhythm strips, because your assessment will determine your treatment. So when we think about tachycardia, um, we have to think about, when we think about sinus tachycardia, we have to think about what kind, what could be causing this problem. And with sinus tachycardia in particular, um, it's usually something not involving the heart that's causing your patient's um, rhythm to be speeded up a little bit, all right? So other things that cause sinus tachycardia that don't have anything to do with the heart are um, like dehydration, okay? Dehydration, fever, um, what else? Shock, if your patient loses a limb, all right? That has nothing to do with the heart, but guess what? The heartbeat's gonna go faster. If your patient is um, a new nurse and she's taking NCLEX, and she gets there and she, you know, faints because she's so nervous. And, she, you know, you check her heartbeat and it's 120. Guess what? 
sinus tachycardia, okay? Um, you see there was some other exercise, stress, um, hypo, hypotension will cause sinus tachycardia. So if NCLEX says your patient has any of these things that do not have to do with the heart, sinus tachycardia is what you're thinking, okay? And that will lead us to our treatment. The treatment is so important for sinus tachycardia because if we think about the cause of it, then that will determine our treatment. So you guys don't want to be given a denison for somebody who has a tachycardia because they're dehydrated. All right. You guys don't want to be given um, lidocaine for somebody who is um, tachycardic because they're anemic. Right. So that's why we need to know, go back to assessment. So the treatment for sinus tachycardia is what? No treatment, okay? The treatment is find the cause, figure out what's causing it. So it will always be continue to monitor the patient, okay, or figure out the cause of what it is or treat the cause. There's nothing particular you have to do in terms of medication cardiac medication for sinus tachycardia. So be very, very careful, all right, with that. So that's sinus tachycardia right there. You guys know what the name means, you know what the rhythm looks like, you know the assessment for sinus tachycardia, and you know the treatment. Simple, okay? Keep it very simple with this information. Now you have to learn atrial tachycardia and ventricular tachycardia, all right? And then you can move on to what? Bradycardia, maybe, okay? All right, so thank you guys for studying sinus tachycardia with me. See you guys later. Bye-bye.